what the heck is going on guys well it snowed over the weekend and it's thursday now i've been stuck inside pretty much ever since well i mean couldn't get on the yards anyway the snow is finally melting off of them for the most part but we got leaves to deal with so i'm i'm here at this one working on the leaves um we're gonna check out uh i mean hate to beat the the fescue drum to death but it's the only thing i got going on right now but uh we're gonna get out <clears throat> and check out some of the uh spot spraying results that we've gotten out here i can't get out of the sun well let's go in here how's that check out some of the spot spraying results we've had we might do it again and uh we're gonna go to another one and clean the leaves off of it and uh do the uh spoon feeding of the ammonium sulfate doo-doo fertilizer on it and uh see how it's coming along anyway stay tuned This cleaned up. <clears throat> Losing my voice. I got this cleaned up. I have uh, spot sprayed it already about, I don't know, three weeks ago with a triclopyr and a three way. Uh, just looking for uh, any broadleaf stuff that's popping up. I'm seeing a little bit of effects on the stuff, but it's really cold. So, thing, well, it's not really cold. I mean, I know some of you live where it is really cold, but uh, you know, the ground's been covered with snow for a, a few days and uh so i mean the stuff's working slow so not a lot of action going on but a little bit of results but i'm gonna come back just because i'm that kind of guy and hit a, a few more spots with the float flow zone getting the flow zone baby so i figure i'll i'll take you around with me let's go oh yeah leaf clean up branches falling down all that kind of stuff had a nice wet snow all right, let's see if we can see some weeds. Yeah, right out here by the street, we got a little bit of thin spot. I don't think I sprayed this actually the other day. That uh, looks like maybe some creeping Charlie or something. I'm gonna put the flow zone in action on it. Bye bye. All right, let's see if we see any Maybe not. I think the uh, lawn guy does that, getting around that with the lawn mold. There's some more of it right there. All right. How about that? Some more stuff. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off and go look for some. The lawn out there is looking pretty decent, but this little area in here with the fence is always a pain in my butt. I have issues with this area for some reason, but I've spot sprayed this. It's wrapped up with weeds a few weeks ago, like I said. You see how those are rolling over? They're gonna die, hopefully. That's kind of like when you see your goldfish start to swim upside down, you know it won't be long. But anyway, this little area in here, I have to step up and do something to it in the spring. Push it up. All right, that's about it for this one. I got a little bit more uh, blowing off on the sidewalks and stuff, and then we're going to move on to another one that is uh, heat tolerant bluegrass. I've had some some folks asking about that stuff, so let's check out that and what the the good and bad parts of it are. Stay tuned. This one is uh, heat tolerant bluegrass. I don't know what variety in particular it is because I didn't put it in. Um, before I started doing the fertility on this place and doing the overseeds and everything, it was a mostly fescue. Well, it was a mostly fescue yard, and the dude before me uh, would mix the fescue and the heat tolerant bluegrass. Um, when I started fertilizing it, there was just small patches of the heat tolerant bluegrass well people ask does it spread well yes it does <laughs> because i have never planted any here and there was barely any here when i started uh, getting aggressive with the uh, fertilizer on it and it has uh, took off and 
and it wrapped up about 90% of the yard. It's some some uh, healthy looking turf and it's, it, it stands up to the summer pretty well. It's irrigated here, obviously. And uh, the only thing I don't like about it is the color. Hold on, my phone has a notice on it here. Let me get that off of there. It was covering up my face. Um, anyway, so you can see it there. It's uh, It has a green color, but it is a lime green color. And the harder you suck it with the fertilizer, the more lime green it gets. So let me see if I can find some fescue in it because it, it is it is just about running off all the fescue. And I have overseeded this yard with fescue and the fescue will not take in. Look at that right there. You see that? Oh, man. You see that right there? That's fescue. See the color difference in, this is hard to do. See the color difference in this stuff right here? That's the bluegrass. And it, it this has had all kinds of fertilizer, humic acid, seaweed, ragweed, whatever other kind of thing you want. I don't remember I made the ragweed part up. Uh, um, but anyway, that's the heat tolerant blue. <laughs> there's the fescue, but there's an obvious color difference. Iron, uh, nothing, nothing changes the color in this. It's just as far as making it dark. Look at right there, that fescue. That's just the genetic makeup of this plant. And the uh, more aggressive I get with it, it spreads more, obviously, but the brighter this green color gets in. And I, I think I'm gonna maybe work on a plan next season to uh, just go ahead and get the fescue out of it. I don't, I'm not sure how to do that. It'll probably take itself out, obviously, if it keeps going like this. But I mean, it just had very small, isolated patches of the bluegrass in it when we started really, look at the snow up there still. When we started uh, socking it with the high fertility program. But anyway, I'll show you a close up of it if that interests anyone. And there you go. Ain't nothing wrong with it, it's healthy. And it is a green color. And it spreads. There you go. Well, like any good teacher, I've got my pets, my favorites. So after the snow and all, I gotta come out and check on them. Got some limbs down, a lot of pine straw in the yard. Grass looks maybe a little beat up from the snow sitting on it. Maybe I'll clean this one up and give it its uh, <coughs> low dose of uh, ammonium sulfate to keep up with my spoon feeding regimen on it so I can get that started. Okay, we're cleaned up, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and put out my low rate of my ammonium sulfate doo-doo fertilizer. Well, a few things you wanna keep in mind, you know, cause like I said, we've had really cold weather and the snow and all that stuff. You don't wanna get out on the yard if anything's frozen or the, the ground is frozen, the grass is frozen, you'll damage it. And uh, obviously, you know, doing this kind of stuff in the snow is, is pretty pointless. But anyway, what I'm gonna do now is, is get out my ammonium sulfate. And the idea of what I'm trying to do here is I'm, I'm sort of spoon feeding this along at uh, low rates at more frequent uh, intervals. So we'll see how that works out on this yard. I've also done the, uh, a few weeks back, I did the uh, micro amp from Meharan and it's uh, they're not really specific about exactly what's in it. It's got, Tons of micronutrients, obviously, but uh, uh, apparently there's a lot of uh, sea kelp extract in it too, and the sea kelp is going to have a little bit of a growth regulator effect. So uh, the, gra the grass is doing pretty good here. I'm impressed, but uh, we're going to keep on with this program. And the idea with the ammonium sulfate in the cool weather, it's a lot more plant available, and it's a lot more stable in the soil than say a urea. So I'm not worried about you know, in this cool weather, there may be on and off period. It doesn't get super cold here. So there's gonna be on and off periods where the plant's gonna be pretty active and using it. And then there's gonna be other times it's gonna be shut down. So with the ammonium sulfate being more stable in the soil, I'm not worried about that leaching or something like urea would. And, and the urea won't, won't go through its process to become plant available with these cooler soil temperatures either, or it will be much more it might it might do it some but not to the level that we're looking for here 
anyway i'm gonna get the uh fertilizer out and if i have time we're gonna go through and spot spray some weeds with some uh triclopyr and 2,4-D ester hang on ester all right okay this is my fertilizer here it's the 1838 with the ammonium sulfate and sulfate of potash um and bio solids and it's got iron in it um the uh bio solids probably aren't gonna be taking off and doing a lot of uh work right now for me but my the idea behind them I, I, in my opinion what i'm my thinking on it is that i'm getting them on in the soil for a little little soil improvement benefit there it is ready to go and with this uh analysis here the 18 for the nitrogen number i've got near about 18,000 square feet here on this yard so if I if I run this out over the front yard, that'll be putting me at a half pound rate of nitrogen over that uh, 18,000 square feet. Uh, I'm running up with stuff like this, interrupting my seed. Thanks, snow. Okay, it's getting dark, so it's definitely gonna to be to my advantage to hurry the heck up and get this done. I got uh, some broadleaf weeds in here. Can you see that right there? That's, um, I forget what the hell it is. But I'm gonna spray it with a uh, triclopyr and 2,4-D ester. I've got uh, about three gallons of water in the flow zone with about four, ga uh, four ounces, well, four gallons would be bad, four ounces of uh, triclopyr 2,4-D ester. Okay, so I'm just going to walk around and hit these things. I'm going to talk a little bit while I walk. If I can do that, I'm not really that coordinated. Um, anyway, with this fescue, I kind of view this a lot like a crop. Because um, you seed it every year and you mess with it and it has all the, the problems associated with a crop. And uh, here where I live is pretty agricultural, so I have the advantage of being able to talk to a lot of guys that, that really know farming, and I've got some whiz-bang farm chemicals available to me. Not so much, you know, a herbicide or something, but fertility type stuff, um, different kinds of uh, humic acids and uh, uh, fertilizers liquid fertilizers and uh you've seen me use a lot of the stuff from my hair and the micro amp and stuff and i got a buddy who's the regional manager there and he he humors me and lets me ask a bunch of questions and and uh, hooks me up with some good stuff to try out um a lot of the liquids the liquid fertilizer the liquid starter i used on most of these fescue yards for example was a hmm, was an ag product and I, I think it got some pretty decent results. But um, anyway, some people will probably disagree with me on that mindset. But it's just just what my feeble mind thinks. But uh, anyway, I'll spot spray these weeds out, hopefully. And uh, hopefully this weekend we'll get to the live 1,000 subscriber jumbo 5,000 giveaway um got everything but the sprayer uh titan turf decided that he wanted to send me the sprayer so that's cool so i'll have it in my hands for the giveaway so when i get that and i get all those names <laughs> down to uh to put into the hat we'll uh we'll do the giveaway i'll, I'll put up a little alert beforehand but i'm gonna try to go live with that you don't have to watch the live drawing to get it i'll i'll figure something out but anyway i'll finish up before it gets too dark here i already can't see what i'm doing it's actually darker than it looks on the phone because you know it's got that technology to make it look lighter thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time bye
everybody, please go subscribe to Paul's Prime Cut.